Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I will be going over my 2023 NBA mock draft for this month's draft. Today is June the 5th, I believe. So that means that there are about 17 days until the NBA draft. And today I will be going over my full NBA mock draft. So we're going to do NBA draft order and ESPN Big Board with full draft. Let's get it started. And before we get started, I want to remind you guys to leave, to make be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. We are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, so that would be appreciated. So here with the first pick, this is... No one's going to argue with this pick on draft night. The Spurs or... If somehow the pick gets moved, no matter what happens, the unanimous first overall pick will be Victor Wimbanyama on draft night. He is the tall, like one of the best prospects in the NBA since LeBron James. So he will be going first to the Spurs. With the second pick in the 2023 NBA draft, this is where things can get interesting. So this, the Hornets have the pick. And for the Charlotte Hornets, they already have their franchise point guard, LaMelo Ball. So it's going to be between Ball and Brandon Miller for the second overall pick. Miller is a wing, well, while Scoot Henderson is a guard. Miller averaged 19 points, 2 assists, 8 rebounds, and shot 43% effective field goal percentage this year at six foot eight and only 19 years old, even though there is some controversy about him. He seems to be the guy that will be drafted second overall. The other prospect who has a chance to get drafted second is Scoot Henderson from the G League Ignite. He was okay this year. He's more of a long-term developmental prospect, but ultimately I do think that the Hornets will go with Brandon Miller to be their long-term starting small forward of the future. That means that with the third pick in the 2023 NBA draft, I'm not mocking trades in this mock draft, maybe in the future, but I will have whoever has the third pick end up taking Scoot Henderson. If the Trailblazers keep the pick, then that means that Damian Lillard will probably get moved if they take Scoot Henderson. But if they do trade the pick, then whoever has the pick will be taking Scoot anyway. So now we have the Houston Rockets on the board, and this is a team that could go with a number of different directions. So you have guys like Cam Whitmore, a young small forward slash wing on the board. Also guys like hometown guy Jerice Walker, Anthony Black, Taylor Hendricks, and Eamon and Azor Thompson are the ones I'm looking at here. Their highest paid player currently is Kevin Porter Jr. making $16 million a year. And with Porter Jr., he's good, but he's very young and hasn't been proven that much. And they could draft us, um, Eamon Thompson here fourth overall, and he can be their point guard of the future. And that is who I believe that they will take on draft night. Next up, we have the Detroit Pistons picking fifth overall in the NBA draft. And for the Detroit Pistons, they traded for Boyan Bogdanovich. I do expect he gets traded this offseason. Maybe even Bagley gets shipped off or like an Alec Burks. Hamadou Diallo is a free agent. Lots of wings that could be gone. I think this is the reason why you take one of these two guys up here, Azor or Eamon Thompson. See, you've got Azor Thompson, six foot seven. And then Cam Whitmore is also 6'7", but the thing about Thompson is he can play all the different positions. He can play point guard if you really want him to. You can He can play small forward. Cam Whitmore is more of a small forward, power forward. But with Detroit, they are a younger team. But with their current roster, I feel like a uh, – a, um, guy that can play shooting guard would fit better with guys like Alec Burks, Jaden Ivey, and Hamadou Diallo being at the position. That is why I think Azor Thompson would be a good pick for the Pistons. Next up, sixth overall, we have the Orlando Magic. And with this pick, 
Orlando will be very happy with taking Cam Whitmore to be their backup wing of the future. Whitmore will be a great selection in the future and the now. He was amazing at Villanova, and they hope that they will hope that that will translate to the NBA. He's a three and D guy, can play two through four from Villanova as a freshman, I believe. He was highly recruited going into the season, but then had some injury issues. Ended up playing okay while he was on the court, but he this will be a player drafted off of potential. Whitmore goes six there. Next up at seventh overall, we have the Indiana Pacers, and the only two guys I believe that could be selected here are Taylor Hendricks and Jairus Walker. They're trying to find a starting power forward since right now their power forward rotation is Jordan Nora, Jalen Smith, and James Johnson, really. So anything would be an upgrade over them, but the debate is between Walker and Hendricks. If you take a look at Walker, he's a six foot seven, two hundred thirty three pound freshman power forward from Houston, who averaged eleven points, two assists, and seven rebounds, shooting forty seven percent effective field goal percentage this year. He is ranked seventh on ESPN, and he could he's a dominant physical presence. But on the other hand, you have Hendricks who's more of a scorer slash 3 and D guy. He's much taller at 6'9", a little bit less weight at 210, about 20 pounds less. It doesn't show his stats here, but he could end up being a really good player. Let's open up the college basketball reference that we will be using for the rest of the video. If you take a look at Taylor Hendricks this year. If this will ever load, then we will take a look at Hendricks. Yes, it does. Taylor Hendricks this year. As a freshman at the University of Central Florida, he's 6'9", 210. That's what we already saw. He was a 46th ranked recruit, averaged 15 points, 7 rebounds, and assist, shot 48% from the field and 39 from three. That is why I think he will be a great prospect. He can shoot very well. Also good on defense, it appears. Two blocks per game and about a steal as well with an assist. 15 points a game as a freshman, but it is from an AAC school, which has been a good conference as of late. UCF has been invited into the Big 12. But I do think that Indiana goes with the more upside potential player here, and that is Jairus Walker. I do think Walker has all NBA potential, whereas Hendricks is better currently, but he doesn't have the same potential. He only has, like, all-star type ceiling Walker could be one of the best power forwards in the NBA in the future. That is why the Pacers, I believe, will take Jairus Walker seventh overall out of Houston. Next up, eighth overall, we have the Washington Wizards. And uh, this isn't even going to take long to explain. You have Anthony Black here, point guard, shooting guard, small forward. He can play all three, six foot seven, 19 year old out of Arkansas. As a freshman, he averaged 13 points, 4 assists, and 5 rebounds on a stacked team. He's drawn comparisons to players like Russell Westbrook. So I think if he is still available at 8, which he should be, this is the guy Washington should take. They've had Monte Morris and DeLon Wright as their point guards this year. Last year they had guys like Hall Neto. And got, they've never had a consistent point guard. Johnny Davis they thought would be the good pick that could play shooting guard, small forward, point guard. But Black really can be that long-term point guard for Washington. Next up, we have the Utah Jazz. And with the ninth overall pick, the Jazz are going to pair Larry Markinen with Taylor Hendricks, who we just looked at a second ago. He is a great scorer, good defensive player for his age. And I think he has the upside to be an all-NBA player or all-star player, like I mentioned earlier. It will be 
she, she doesn't have as high of a ceiling as other players, but he is better than most people right now. And that is why Hendricks, I think, will be a really good player if he is paired with a good ball handler like Colin Sexton, a shooter like Lowry Markinen, and a dominant big man like uh, Walker Kessler who can take up the paint while Hendricks can be on the three-point line. Next up, we have the Dallas Mavericks, and I do think that this pick will be traded for a more win-now player, but whoever has this pick, I think it'll either be Phoenix or themselves that have this pick. I think they could trade for DeAndre Aiden, but no matter who has this pick, I think the pick is Kaysen Wallace. As a freshman at Kentucky, he is a he was a six foot three point guard and he averaged twelve points, four rebound four assists and four rebounds, shooting forty five percent effective field goal percentage. Just as a nineteen year old, if you look at it here, thirty five percent from three, only seventy six percent from the free throw line, which could be um helped out in the NBA. This guy says that he is a top tier point of attack defender, and that is the reason that I think Dallas will take him here. Coming off the bench for Luka and Kyrie, they didn't really have any defense. That's why Frank Nilakina came in and played, who is mo- mostly known as a defending guy. Because if you look at Nilakina, if it says anything about him, he is just a more defender than anything. And it doesn't really say anything, but Neil Akina, terrible this year. I think if you can replace him with a young guy that can be much better than Neil Akina down the road, that is what Dallas should do here, taking Case and Wallace, the sixth three-point guard, at 10. Next up with the 11th overall pick, the Orlando Magic, and I've seen most mock drafts have them taking Grady Dick out of Kansas here. But me personally, I think that the Magic should go with either Jalen Hood or Nick Smith Jr. to be more of a guard off the bench because I had them taking Cam Whitmore. Those mock drafts had them taking Azor Thompson, who is a guard. So I think that a wing or, or excuse me, a guard would be the way to go here since Dick is six foot seven and can run shooting guard and small forward. They had Thompson who can run shooting guard, small forward point guard. I think a long term guard is the way to go here. And I think it's between these two guys on before draft night we could find out that another guy is in the running. But Jalen Hood Shafino I feel like has been a better prospect going into the draft. Thirteen points, four rebounds and four assists at age nineteen ranked 11th, and these guys all say that he's pretty good, pretty good on defense, a steal, but a lot of turnovers, so I don't think he could be a lead guard for this team who's needing somebody that can step up. I think Nick Smith here, six foot five point guard, same height as Hood Shafino, and he was injured a lot this year and still showed a lot of promise as a future NBA point guard. He would be a dream pick for Orlando if Jalen Suggs doesn't end up working out. You can have a starting five down the road of Fultz. So I think Fultz might get traded. So Cole Anthony at the point guard, Nick Smith at the shooting guard, Cam Whitmore at the small forward, Franz Wagner at the power forward, and Paolo at the center or something. Either way, it would be a great team. Next up, we have the Thunder, who I think – if they had this situation in real life, they already have a good point guard, Josh Giddy, with a good backup in Trey Mann, who I think they believe in as of now. Shooting guard, you have Shea, or you can swap out him and Giddy. But you have Shea, his backup is um, Isaiah Joe, who led the NBA in three-point percentage or was pretty close to it this year. Small forward, you have... Lou Dort and Aaron Wiggins as his backup, I guess. Power forward Jalen Williams with the backup of Kenrich Williams. And then center, you have Chet returning with the backup of Pokusevsky. Now, I think that the perfect pick here with Pokusevsky being on an expiring deal, he will be up for an extension this year. And I don't think that you give it to him. But that doesn't mean that I think Derek Lively will be the pick. I think you need another guy that might be similar to him. I just don't know who that would be. Noah Clowney would be a good pick here, I feel. 
but I don't think that it's worth taking him this early in the draft. I think Kula Bailey could end up being the guy that they thought Pokusevsky could be, a taller wing who can guard one through five and just play well. Leonard Miller would be a phenomenal pick by Oklahoma City to fill that small forward depth, which is their weakest position off the bench with Wiggins as the backup. He can shoot. He's 6'10". He would pretty much be what they wanted Pokusevsky to be. But I don't know if it's worth taking him at 12. And I'm not mocking trades in this mock draft. So I think that in real life they would try, they should trade down. But with all things considered right now, based off the knowledge that we have, if everyone's keeping their picks, I think that the pick for Oklahoma City, the highest upside pick that could turn into a guy that can impact the team the most is Keontae George out of Baylor, a six foot four freshman wing, average fifteen points, three assists, and four rebounds as a nineteen year old. He shot thirty four from three, thirty eight from the field goal from the field. And he can score from three in mid range and drive as well. He can draw fouls, grab rebounds, but the only thing is his assist. So he's not going to really be a long term point guard. But the thing for George is he can run shooting guard and small forward. So if Isaiah Joe ends up having a down year, you can have George in that lineup. I think he is the perfect player for Oklahoma City to draft if he is still available at 12 on the big night. Next up, at 13th overall, we have the Toronto Raptors. And for the Raptors, I think that this pick could get traded, especially if they trade for Damian Lillard, or, whoa, for the third overall pick. But I think that the pick that they go with here, Gary Trent has a player option. He's probably going to decline it. So I think you take Grady Dick here. Don't let him slide past you. He can be the next Gary Trent, a good kind of athletic guy that's a sharpshooter. Not the best defender, but a good scorer. And that's what they are looking for there if Trent declines that player option. Next, we have the New Orleans Pelicans. And they have been linked to some Jonas Valanciunas trade rumors. Jackson Hayes is young and kind of unproven. But he was a lottery pick who has not really worked out. And then Billy Hernan Gomez only has one year left on his deal. I think a big man would work out the most here. But... There's also some positions that are in much greater need than the center spot. You have point guard with C.J. McCollum, who's aging. You could draft a guy that can replace him down the line since Kyra Lewis and Dyson Daniels haven't shown much promise. I know Daniels could still end up being good. At power forward, you have Zion, who who knows if he'll ever be healthy, and Trey Murphy the third is his backup. Murphy has shown promise, but he can't run the show by himself. I think a good pick here would be Chris Murray. Who could sneak up into the lottery? Derek Lively might go here. But a guy that I think could be perfect for this New Orleans team, a guy that could play power forward and center at 6'10", 205, Noah Clowney, who averaged 10 points and 8 rebounds. New Orleans could go for a more developmental player since their team is kind of win now right now. Clowney, not a good shooter, as you can see with the three-point percentage, but once he's in the paint, 67% from the field. He's got a good offensive rating, amazing defensive rating. This would be an amazing pick by New Orleans, and he will probably still be on the board, ranked 20th overall on the big board. Next, we have the Atlanta Hawks at 15, picking at 15 again, because I believe last year A.J. Griffin was the 15th overall pick. But if they can draft a backup point guard for Trey Young, I think that's their first need with Aaron Holiday not really being that great this year. Their second need that they could get in this draft is a backup wing, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and that is what I believe that they will take in this draft. I think Jet Howard is who they will take. He's a guy, 6'8", can play small forward, shooting guard, and power forward. He's 6'8", 215, 14 points, 3 rebounds, a game at Michigan playing under his dad, Jawan Howard, as a sophomore, I believe. No, freshman, actually. 
he was pretty good this year at Michigan, showed a lot of improvement throughout the year, and I think he would be a great pick for Atlanta here. Next up, we have the Utah Jazz, 16th overall, and this is their second pick, of course, already taking Hendricks. I think this is a spot where a point guard would be in their best interest, and with Jalen hood Shafino still being available, I think that that is a pick that they go with. He's a 6'5", athletic, explosive guard, 14-4-4 and four a game as a freshman for Indiana, and I think he's just so perfect for this Jazz team coming off the bench for Sexton and maybe even Horton Tucker next year. He would be the perfect, perfect player. Next up, with the 17th overall pick, the Los Angeles Lakers, a win-now team. They're going to try to make LeBron and AD happy, try to do whatever they can to be a competitive team next year, and they only have three players currently on the roster for next season. And those players are LeBron, AD, and Max Christie. Of course, you have Shaquille Harrison, team option. They already declined. Jared Vanderbilt has a team option. Mo Bamba, team option. And Malik Beasley. But those are all some expensive contracts. Beasley did not play that great last year for a $16 million contract. And Mo Bamba definitely is not worth $10 million on the open market. But Jared Vanderbilt, they are likely to accept that. That's only $4 million. They just need a win-now player. That is what I'm trying to get out of this. He can be from any position, and I think the most win-now player still available here, that would be the perfect pick for this team, is a good scorer, Jordan Hawkins out of UConn, who proved himself in the NCAA tournament this year, averaged 16-4 and four in the regular season as a sophomore, and I think this, this would be the perfect pick for Los Angeles. Pair him alongside... Some of the guys in the backcourt off the bench, like Austin Reeves, and I think this team could be really good next year with him being a decent member of the squad. 18th overall, you have the Heat, who are currently in the finals. They're going to be kind of in the same boat as L.A., but I think that they also could be looking at a guy that they can develop in the long term, kind of like Nikola Jovic that they drafted last year. And I think with their defensive-minded team identity, Bilal Kula Bailey could be a great pick. Derek Whitehead could be a good pick, trying to turn him into the next Lance Stevenson or something. And then another good guy that I think could be picked here is Kobe Bufkin out of Michigan. Draft him since Oladipo might just get traded to a team for a salary dump since he might not even play at the beginning of next year. So I think Bufkin is a good guy that can come in if they trade Oladipo or if they keep him and he's just not the same to replace Victor Oladipo. Six foot four Michigan guard. Perfect pick there for Miami. Next up we have the Golden State Warriors. And everyone's probably saying draft a center. You don't have any backup centers, but they don't ever have any backup centers. So why would they change it this time around? I think that the pick for Golden State in this situation is a guy that can get buckets and get buckets whenever he wants to do it. Chris Murray, Keegan Murray of the Kings brother, 20 points and 8 rebounds a game for Iowa this year. As a junior, that is a good pick for Golden State in my opinion. Next up, we have the Rockets up again on the clock. They picked Eamon Thompson fourth overall to be that long-term point guard. Now with Jay Sean Tate, only having two years left on his deal, and guys like Frank Kaminsky and guys like that all being expiring. Kenyon Martin on the last year of his deal, he's already expressed previously that he doesn't want to be in Houston anymore. I think that a good pick for Houston in this situation would be a Bilal Kula Bailey or somebody along that path that they can develop. But I think the perfect pick is Bryce Sensabaugh, the freshman out of Ohio State, Notice how they have had so many freshman wings go in the first round the last few years. You've got Malachi Branham, and I can't remember the one that went in 2021, but I'm almost positive that one did. He averaged 16-5 and five as a freshman at Ohio State, and he could be the next best Rockets wing, and I think that he would be a good pick here at pick 20. Next up, 21st overall, you have the Brooklyn Nets. And I want to take Derek Lively, but I think that if you're Brooklyn, you still can believe in 
Dayron Sharp a little bit. He has two years left on his deal if you accept the team option. And he's still a pretty good player. He's shown some promise as an athletic big. You've got Nick Claxton, so I don't think Derek Lively would be the good pick here. He's just going to keep falling in this mock draft. I think the good pick here would be a guy that can play shooting guard and point guard with Spencer Dinwiddie getting expensive on the last year of his deal. He might get traded. I And then Patty Mills also in the last year of his deal, a good veteran that might get traded. So I think that the good pick here would be a guy that can play shooting guard and point guard. I just don't see anything like that right now. But I think Terquavion Smith will sneak into the first round and be the Brooklyn Nets pick 21st overall, 20 spots higher than what is he, what he has projected to go at. Then now the Nets with back-to-back picks. I think a power forward is a good pick here. And I'm thinking G.G. Jackson out of South Carolina, a guy that could score as a freshman at South Carolina at just 19 years of age, has shown some promise athletically. People were saying he could go as high as 12th to the Thunder, so I'm sure the Nets would be happy to get him right there. Next up, the Blazers. And with Scoot Henderson already being on the team or somewhere else in this mock draft, I think a good guy to take would be Bilal Kula Bailey. He's a great defender, showed that playing a, alongside Victor Wimbanyama, and he might be a bust, but you'll never know until you draft him. The only reason I say he could be a bust is because he was only getting a lot of hype this year because he was Victor Wimbanyama's teammate. If he was on a different French team, he would probably be an end of the second round pick or draft and stash at the very, very end of the second round, maybe even next year or two years down the line. Next up, we have the Kings, and I think the, a good pick here would be Derek Lively finally going off the board to be a backup big for Sabonis with Rashawn Holmes being really expensive. Then you've got Medu and Lynn being free agents, so I'm going to have them take Derek Lively the second in this mock draft. Projected to go 12, ends up falling 12 spots to 24 to Sacramento. Next up, we have the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Grizzlies are in need of some wings for sure. With Dylan Brooks, might not ever be able to play another game in the NBA, and then Zaire Williams has kind of proven himself. You don't want him to really be a starter right right now, though. And then you got like David Roddy, who you traded a lot to get, and he didn't play that great as a freshman. You need to take a small forward here if I'm Memphis. That's what I'm doing. And the guys that I'm looking at are Max Lewis and Leonard Miller. Lewis was originally projected to go in the lottery, fell a little bit as a sophomore at Pepperdine. He averaged 17, 3, and 6. And I think he would be a great pick here for Memphis. You don't have to play him right away. You could get a good small forward for the mid-level exception on a one-year deal, even though that mid-level exception isn't the same this year with the new CBA. I think it would still be a good pick here. Next up with the Indiana Pacers, they could use with this pick a guy that they can kind of develop, that they don't want to slip through the cracks. And I don't know who that could be, but they have a good core already, and I don't think that they really, really need a guy that could average 10, 15 points immediately with good guys at each position. And Derek Lively would be a perfect pick if he was still available at this spot. But, of course, going two spots ago, I think this would be a great pick for Ryan Rupert to finally go. Maybe you can draft and stash him. Maybe you just sit him on the bench for a whole year and send him to the G League for a while. He could get really developed sitting behind Chris Duarte, who's like a 25-year-old third-year player, and Benedict Matherin this year. 27th is the Hornets who took Brandon Miller second, so they don't really need another wing. But I think a young guard would be a good fit for this team. And I see Amari Bailey is listed as a point guard, and I like that. I just don't think he's a natural point guard. So that makes me want to go look at the centers. Of course, never mind, you already have lots of guys at that position. So now shooting guards, I think, would be a good position. And Derek Whitehead, I see him. He is a good, really young guy for this team. 
And so now I guess we're just doing first round. This pick. Thank you guys for watching. This video is about to end in about 10 seconds unintentionally. Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I might do round two in the future.